we may belong to different generations, we all share the same dream of becoming successful entrepreneurs. Do you agree with me? Yes. And yes, that is why we are all here today. I suppose you all have different motivations for wanting to become an entrepreneur. Do you want to know my motivation for starting my own business? I was fired from my job. Natanggal ako sa aking trabaho. At that time, I was 31 years old and already was the president of a logistics company. When I got fired, I realized I could do one of two things either find another job and run the risk of getting fired again, or start my own business where I can be my own boss and only I can fire myself. I chose the latter, and as they say, the rest is history. Of course, it's easy for me to recount this story now, but in those early years, my life was struggle. My wife and I had two young daughters when we were starting out. And I was so busy that I didn't get to spend much time with them during their early years. I relied on my father and mother-in-law to help raise our children. Financially, I borrowed money from friends and family to raise capital. Later on, I would put our house up for collateral to secure loans to expand our business. I took enormous risk, but I could attribute seven things that gave me confidence that I was on the right track. You could take the seven things as keys to success. The first was that logistics was a sunrise industry. The Philippines in the late 70s and early 80s emerged as a major manufacturing and assembly destination for semiconductors the key components of our electronic gadgets. Companies like Intel and Fairchild needed more to move raw materials and finished goods in and out of the country and logistics serve that need. At that time, there were very many, too many logistic players and I saw the opportunity for my young company to grow. As you all know, I would go to the United States maybe three or four times a year, and I would sleep in a car with my friend, going make rounds to the Silicon Valley in the United States. The second was that I already knew logistics inside and out. First, as a CPA in the auditing logistics firm. Second, as a president of a logistics company. Though the company that I built had to start from scratch, my knowledge base was quite advanced, and so my learning curve was not so steep. The third and most important thing was that I had a wonderful, supportive, and loving wife. My wife, Sylvia, quit her own job to help me with the company. No task was beyond her. In fact, there were instances when a shipment would arrive after office hours and all the drivers have already left. It was my wife who would drive the truck to make sure we delivered our commitments to our clients. When our business is stabilized, she chose to become a housewife to make sure our children were raised well. For those of you who are just starting out, ask yourself, is your new business in a sunrise industry? where there is tremendous growth potential and few players? Do you have a knowledge base that you could leverage to give yourself an advantage? And most importantly, is your spouse or significant other loving and supportive towards your entrepreneurial aspirations? If the answers are yes, then good for you, of course. There are no guarantees to success, but these initial three things are a huge advantage. If the answers are no, my, then my friend, I had to warn you 
that you will be facing a steeper uphill climb. If you're entering a highly competitive industry, you need to clearly differentiate your offering and carve out a niche that you can win. If you lack knowledge, there are many ways to address this. You can go back to school, get an MBA or executive MBA, or take a specialized course in your specific field. There are online classes being offered by top schools like Stanford that will give you world-class instruction without leaving the country. You can seek mentors and benchmark with peers like what PLDT is doing. And of course, you can always hire people to help close whatever knowledge gap you may have. As an entrepreneur, you don't necessarily know you don't necessarily have to know everything. You just need to know enough so that you can ask the right questions to make the best decisions. For those who are not yet married, carefully consider who, choose, who you choose as a life partner. As they say, happy wife, happy life. If you choose a partner who will be very demanding of your time and attention, then be prepared to manage your stress levels. When challenges erupt in your business and your partner always decides to throw a tantrum. Before that even happens, communicate as best as you can. Flowers and romantic getaways also go a long way in keeping the peace. If you manage your relationship you're with, with your significant other in a healthy way, then you have a strong foundation in managing relationships with other people, which we call in Filipino as pakikisama, which is the fourth key to my success. When I say pakikisama, I do not mean inuman, which is usually the first thought some may have when they hear, when they hear the word. What I mean is the value of being one with others, of having real personal relationship based on caring and mutual respect. Pakikisama is extending help and being there when people need you without expecting anything in return. In business, especially in accounting, we can get very cold and very transactional. If we do not get anything out of a relationship, we will not lift a finger to help them out when they are in need because it will affect the bottom line. In my experience, people who behave this way miss out on the, on the positive effects of Pakikisama. Pakikisama begins with your colleagues and employees, spending time to get to know your people seeing how they are doing in their lives, taking an interest in their passions and dreams will result in developing an honest relationship with them. I practice what is called MBWA, or management by walking around. I routinely make my rounds all over my business, meeting and greeting people from the rank and file to middle management and of course, the top executives. With this kind of pakikisama, I believe I earned their trust and respect, giving me a stronger base of support to lead them beyond my title as chairman. For clients, we practice pakikisama when they invite us to join their CSR efforts. From three plantings to fun runs, we embrace these opportunities to honor our clients and show our appreciation for their support to our company. Of course, it is good PR just the same, but when done with an authentic sense of Pakikisama, you develop a much stronger relationship that goes beyond business. With Pakikisama, you take the first step and reach out to others. Whether or not that action is rewarded directly is irrelevant. We have a loving God who watches us, everything we do, and will reward us accordingly in his own time. 
As Jesus shares with us in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 3, When you give alms, your left hand must not know what your right hand is doing. Your almsgiving must be secret. And your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. For managing relationships, let's shift gears a bit. Working in logistics, the importance of time discipline was deeply ingrained in my PC. Given that supply management is a chain, once there is any kind of delay, there is a chain reaction that translates to problems and higher costs. Time discipline. The fifth key to my success starts with basic punctuality. This means people arriving at their appointments on time, meetings, and events starting and ending on time. If this is a habit ingrained in your organization, you reap the benefits of higher productivity in our group. I'm very strict about punctuality, and those who fail to be punctual face harsh consequences. Time discipline also deals with deadlines. Once we set plans and deadlines, I am adamant that we stick to them. When you are strict about meeting deadlines, you become far more creative in finding ways to solve problems. It is a start to be consistently punctual and meet deadlines. I personally take time discipline to the next level. I usually arrive 15 to 30 minutes earlier at any appointment to account for any traffic or circumstance that may cause a delay. I was about here about an hour before we start because there's no more traffic because of this skyway. Given our traffic and the Filipino time mentality, it is very difficult to impose this discipline consistently with an organization. Clever planning, anticipation, and incentives such as early bird prices can help mitigate the inherent resistance people may have regarding punctuality and deadlines. The sixth key to success I'd like to share with you today is the necessity of being makulit. In English, you can translate this to nagging, not to a nagging wife. This is especially relevant in the context of Philippine business. Though it may seem to have negative and repetitive connotations, it simply means following through consistently on whatever initial directions you may have given. In my experience, it is not enough to give instructions once and expect that everything will turn out the way I want to. In my family, when I talk to my kids, I talk to them in the morning, in lunch, and evening before they go to sleep. I have to make several follow-up calls and down the chain of command to verify if indeed we are on track to achieve our goals. My team is very familiar with this and are used to being drilled and grilled on their current and subsequent actions until we have completed our objective. It may seem cumbersome, but it's simply a small price to pay to get the job done the first time around. My last message to you, to all of you this morning, is simple. It's never too late. It's never too late to become a successful entrepreneur. As long as you are alive and kicking, you can take one step forward and then another until you realize the vision that you have. Even if you make mistakes, you can learn from them and start over again. It is never too late. And as you have seen it, seven keys to success. One, pick the right industry. Two, develop a knowledge advantage. Three, Pick your spouse wisely. Four, pakikisama. Five, time discipline. Six, be makulit. And seven, 
it's never too late to start. It seems like common sense, right? It is. And yet all of us, no matter what stage in life we may find ourselves in, whatever generation we call ourselves, baby boomer, Gen X, millennial, we can still improve in these common sense matters that we fail to nurture. Think of all the delays that cost us time and money. Think of all the mistakes we made because we didn't follow up diligently enough. Think of all the opportunities we missed because we were too late to the game. We can learn from our mistakes and apply these things that I've shared today for you to be better entrepreneurs. I hope what I shared was helpful. I wish you all the best on your journey. Maraming salamat po, magandang umaga, at mabuhay kayong lahat. Thank you.